welcome back to my channel, Clay Soil. My name is Perny, and it's so good to see you. <sighs> I'm just soaking in all the sun right now. It's like the golden hour in my room, and it just feels so nice in here. The thermometer says the humidity level in here is at 93%. Actually, now it's 89 because the sun got a little less um intense in the last half an hour but seriously a half an hour ago it was like 99 percent humidity which is crazy i've never had that back home the next video that i'm making today is a sphagnum moss propagation video so i've been doing this for quite a few of my more rare plants because I mean, I'm good at propagating things in soil and water, but soil, you tend to have way more chances of your plant dying. And also because I'm still trying to figure out my whole plant environment here, um, sphagnum moss has been the most safest way to propagate for me at this point. And it's so easy, like you see the results so fast. Um, so right now, I think my favorite is sphagnum moss propagation, then water propagation, and then soil. So I'm just gonna do a really quick video showing you how you can propagate your plants, whether it's a common plant or a rare plant or somewhere in between, you can propagate it in sphagnum moss. The plant that I'm going to be propagating today is my philodendron white knight and I wanted to share a piece of it with my friend Nicole back home so I thought why not let it root because I I mean I like just getting cuttings from people but I feel like if somebody gives you a cutting and it's not rooted and your environment is different from theirs already there's just always a little bit more chance of it not rooting for you so why not just take some time before I see her chop it up and then just let it root um, in sphagnum moss so that by the time I give it to her it'll be rooted and she doesn't have to worry about it right also I have to mention I am like terrified of cutting this one particular plant because I've had it since October and I never chopped it because I don't know I just get a little anxiety when it comes to my more rare plants to cut them but you'll never know and you'll never learn if you don't try so we're gonna do this together okay this way at least i i don't think there's actually any propagation videos out there for a philodendron white knight anyway so let's just do this together and see how it goes okay so if you're not part of the clay soil family i would love for you to join by subscribing to my channel and you can click the bell icon to be notified every time that i upload new content and also please go over to instagram and follow me at clay soil perny I would love to see you there. I love interacting with people there. So, okay, finally, let's get right into it, okay? Now let's talk about everything you will need to propagate your own plants in sphagnum moss. So first thing you'll need is sphagnum moss, and it's in here, I don't know if you can see, but so I already pre-soaked it and I'm using the green kind. So there, I've noticed there is a difference in, the, in using the different types of sphagnum moss for propagation. I just like this because I think it looks a little aesthetically more pleasing. Um, whereas my, one of my Squamy Ferums I have had in the brown colored sphagnum moss and this works just as fine, you know. Um, the biggest difference between this uh, brown colored one and the green color, this one tends to, the brown colored one tends to um, hold on to moisture much longer, whereas this, uh, this one will dry out a little bit faster. But, you know, when you have like clear glasses, um, like see, it just looks a little bit prettier. See, so like the green moss just tends to look a little bit prettier. This is a candle vase um, or candle jar that I had that I used up and now I'm using it as a propagation jar. The next thing you'll need is rooting hormone and I'm using just the Bontone bon Tone rooting powder 
from Bonide that I got from Home Depot. Um, you're gonna need a propagation box. So this is a cookie, plastic cookie jar that my brother had that he was about to throw away. And I was like, can I have it? And he was like, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, they don't understand. But yeah, so I'm using this. And this, I had my Gloriosum in. And eventually the Glo Gloriosum is just not getting too big to be in here. So now I'm just gonna use it for the Philodendron White Knight. You're gonna need a pair of shears um, that's recently disinfected. Make sure you're using clean shears, um, some water, and I use, okay, this is my little secret that I've been trying out lately. I've been using this orchid plant food mist on my propagations and it seems to help. I don't know why, it just seems to help. It's not like I'm giving it a lot. I give it like a couple mists, like two to three mists here and there and it likes it. It doesn't really like hate me for it. So I've been using this and I plan on using it on all my propagation mists. It just helps like what I'll do is I'll like spray every week or something and then also give it a couple pumps of just the plant food. It's been loving it. Okay, so that's it for all the stuff you're going to need for um, propagating your plant. Now let's get right into propagating the plant. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. But we're gonna do this together. Okay. But I'm so excited because I, I wanted to give this to Nicole for a while, so I'm really excited to be doing this. Okay, so here is my Philodendron White Knight. Um, as you can tell, when I first got it in the mail, it had these really big leaves. That was last October, and they're still on. The oldest leaves are still alive, but this is all the new growth that it's given me since um, October, and they're a lot smaller, and the reason for that is they're not getting the same type of environment that they were getting back in Sri Lanka. So um, they're a lot smaller. And then I also had a little bit of a incident earlier in the year where I had some kind of fungal infection. So I've been um, treating it with um, copper. And so these are the newest ones and they don't have the iron you know the rust on them so that's that okay so now i'm gonna zoom in so i can show you clearly where i'm gonna cut this plant and then we're gonna root that new plant so if you can see this little bump right there that is a node and i'm going to be snipping it directly under this node and eventually once it starts rooting that will become roots for the top cutoff of the plant and here we go guys Ooh, I'm so nervous okay so i'm just going to take my shears and i'm going to cut it right below let me just make sure okay i chopped it off oh my god I've never done that before. It's freaking me up. <sighs> okay, so we did that. We really did that. We cut off this piece. And just to show you, there's a little new growth right there. And that's the root. Let's see. You can see. That's the root that's going to eventually become um, roots for this plant. Next, you're going to be dipping this little itty bitty node into rooting hormone and unfortunately right now i don't have something to put the rooting hormone in usually i would say you know dump the rooting hormone on like a plate or like some kind of tube but i'm just gonna go right ahead and just dip the cutting and rooting hormone so it's like white you see and the node is all covered. I'm just gonna put a little bit more for good measures. Okay, so now it has that. So now all you're going to do is create a little sphagnum moss bed for your new propagation cutting. So what I do is I just kinda 
lightly make a little bed for my new cutting like that. And here's what I do. Okay, so I take my orchid mist and I just kind of spray a couple of spritz. So now I'm gonna take the cutting and wrap it in sphagnum moss like so. Kind of like make a ball or a cocoon around the plant. I'm gonna just stick it in here and center it to the center it to the jar. I might have to find a bigger jar for this. Oh no, I didn't realize it's gonna be this big. Okay, so let's just bury it deep. So how I'll know this is working is once I see that new growth that's in there starting to grow and unfurl, then I know it's working. And also I'm gonna be checking on the roots every so often to make sure that, you know, it is getting root growth. Oh my God, I forgot to mention. Okay, you have to make sure when you start this process that your sphagnum moss is wet so you, that you've soaked it in water for at least 10 minutes so that it could soak up all the water it could. And then you make sure you wring out the sphagnum moss really well so that it's just moist and damp, but like, not like, water coming out because that will kill your plant. The key to successful propagation in sphagnum moss is making sure your moss doesn't dry out, that it's always slightly damp, but not soaking wet. I'm just gonna spritz it. I'm gonna spritz the wall, make sure it gets, and then I'm just gonna give it a couple of pumps of the orchid spray and put it in and that's it that's pretty much all there is to it once you have done this part and you've sealed it make sure you go back every week and mist your moss so that it stays damp um, especially it depends on what type of environment it's in that's the thing like my environment is different from yours you might live in a more humid um, climate you might live in a more hotter climate than me so like for me i have to mist it every two, three days because this area right here, um, it gets pretty bright light most of the day. And then from three to eight o'clock at night, it's getting bright light as you've been seeing. So you just have to make sure you are taking care of your propagations and sphagnum moss um, based on where you live. So it's all trial and error. That's all I'm gonna say. Whatever the case, just make sure you're um, keeping the sphagnum moss damp it has to stay damp okay now let me just show you a couple of my propagations that way you know it's working and i'm not just like telling you something to do that i haven't tried but this is my glory awesome ah. So my, my friend, Nicole, she was so sweet. Before I moved to Cali, she gave me a cutting of her Gloriosum with like one really giant stem that was at least like a foot long. Um, but it just didn't do well in, on the plane coming over here. And so I had to quickly like cut it down to the stump. And I would say within a month, look, I have this in a month. I think that's very good, you know? Um, so I can't wait for it to start giving me leaves. Um, and then I have another. <laughs> so this is pretty funny. So I bought this box of tampons just so I could use this box for propagation. It's pretty big. I mean, like, where are you gonna find this big of a box? So yeah, that was pretty funny. My husband like rolled his eyes at me, but whatever. But I have my pasta in and in there and look, it's given me three leaves. I almost killed this plant. My pasta zenum, I like almost killed it by overwatering it and also putting it in too much soil should have known better, put it in too much soil. And so I, like acted quickly and I was like, oh my God, I need to get it in sphagnum moss before it dies on me. But now it's rehabbing and it's giving me three, three leaves. But the fun part is, let me see, I don't know if I can show you, but if you look right in there, there's another node 
that's about to pop out, which I'm so excited about, because that means I can snap, snap, chop, chop, you know? <laughs> Make a bigger, bushier plant. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for propagating your plants in sphagnum moss. I mean, how easy is that? You don't have to water it. You don't have to like, you know, make sure it's like getting the right humid environment like you would with water propagation or soil propagation. This is it's in its own dome. It's like self humidifying because it's in a, you know, container that's sealed and it's getting the nutrient every week and it's getting the proper amount of misting. So yeah, I think this is becoming quickly my favorite way to propagate. So that's it you guys, that's how you propagate um, your plants in sphagnum moss. I hope that this helps you out a lot. If you have any questions or comments or tips that you would like others to know or for me to answer, um, please leave them down below in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. Also, if you have any propagation success from watching this video, please share it with me on Instagram at Clay Slow Perny. I would love to see your propagation success and we can talk about, you know, what's working and what's not working. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do like the video and you want to see more content, please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. I would really appreciate it and I hope to see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.